about raining cats and dogs, our plumbing's in a right pickle. Fetch me my spanner, lad, while I stick me finger in the dike. Gromit, don't forget me spanner. It's down here somewhere. Gromit, don't... I shouldn't bother with that, Gromit. It's still only a prototype. That's left over from our lunar landing. Just leave it be, lad. Bring me my spanner, lad. Don't do that, lad. We'll lose the lights. Just the job. Bring it here now, will you, lad? I'll need sturdier hardware to stop her this leak. Well done! Our troubles are over! Whoops! That was a shock. Best trip the circuit breaker, lad. And stay clear of the water. It's electric. Look out, lad. The tide's coming in. Best find another way to the circuit breaker. Come in. Have you gone, crackers? You'll get yourself electrocuted. Find a way to the circuit breaker, Gromit. It's our only chance. Steer clear, lad, or you'll get cooked. Careful, old chum. Careful, lad. That's extremely volatile compressed rocket gas. Ex-NASA. Now we're in a pickle and no mistake. Remember our toy train? Now that was a runaway ride. Fast from it. The cone's too strong. You'll have to find some other way to reach the circuit breaker. The cone's too strong, Gromit. Don't do it, lad. To blow yourself to smithereens! Lincoln Nora! Well done, Gromit! Poor be fixed in a jiffy! Just a moment, turn to the right, and now it's safe to hit the light! That's better! Oh, there you are! Well, we'd best clean up! Crack on, lad, there's a lot to do! Sorry about the unseasonal weather, I'm afraid it means we'll have to put off our little trip to the seaside. Unless... we bring the seaside to us. Look, 
here. We've already got a cellar full of water. Just a few more items. There we are. And we can enjoy the seaside from the comfort of our own home. Ho ho ho! Won't that be something, lad? We'll stay home for the holidays and have our own beach to boot. Lucky the rain's let up for now. I'll be back in a trice with all the necessaries. Sun, sand and beach umbrella coming up. Have faith, lad. West Wallaby Street's first indoor beach will be ready in a trice. Sun, sand and beach umbrella coming right up. It does look cozy in there, but I'm set on gathering the goods for our beach. Better be careful, or I'll be in the cellar faster than you can say secret trap door. No beach supplies in there. I'm sure Miss Flit won't mind if I take just one. Picking you up, lassie. With a date. Surely you're not still thinking of the beach. It's freezing cold and might rain any moment. Ah, a little wet never dampened the spirits of my biscuit. Grab your wellies and we'll be off. Duncan, I really don't think so. You must admit, it's hardly beach weather, is it? Don't be ridiculous. Oh, hello there, Wallace. Come and meet Duncan McBiscuit. He's an old friend. <laughs> and of course you know my two precious darlings, Fuji Woo and Tinky Wee. Say hello to Mr. Wallace, Angels. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, look, Gromit. It's your friends from next door. Cute little fellows. Oh, yes. They're show dogs, you know. Prize winners. They're my pride and joy. Well, I won't keep you. No, 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 no. Duncan was just leaving. Leaving with you, lassie? For a day on the beach? But what if there's a cloud burst? I don't consider thunder and lightning very pleasant beach companions. But there's no thunder and no lightning. Can you hear any thundering? Any cracking or booming? Well, can you? Maybe I can. Just hush your tongue a moment, will you? You can't hear no thunder, can you? Not even a wee tinkle. I suppose not. Rather stay warm and dry here at home if you don't mind. Oh, dear fun. It won't be any fun to it. <clears throat> Ah, mind your own beeswax, you big both and bots. Duncan, don't be so rude. I'll be sweet as honey when I'm buzzing round the beach with my best lassie. I won't be buzzing anywhere in this bitter weather. Oh, come on, Felicity. <clears throat> ah, mind your own beeswax, you big boffin' bots. Duncan, don't be so rude. I'll be... I will... Wait, Felicity, don't make me beg you. <clears throat> cute little fellas. Oh, they're more than cute, Mr. Wallace. They're show dogs. And they're far too delicate for wintry weather. Why? My precious puppets would turn to popsicles. Duncan, we'll catch our death of course. <clears throat> Cute little fat. Oh, they're more than... Oh. <clears throat> you wouldn't go to the seaside today, would you, Wallace? You'd stay inside with a cosy cup of tea, inventing some clever thing, wouldn't you? It's certainly cosier indoors. Just so. 
Now, Duncan, it's time you were on your way. On my way? Felicity! I refuse to go out in a thunderstorm. Oh, that's no thunderstorm. You can't hear no thundering, can you? Maybe I can hear thundering. Just button your backpacks for a moment, will you? You can't hear no thunder, can you? Not even a wee tinkle. I suppose not. Duncan. I say, that's a handsome beach brawny. Perhaps you'd like to borrow it. You're most welcome. We won't be needing it as we're not going anywhere. Oh yes, we are, lassie. Oh no, we aren't, Duncan. You can borrow the brolly once Duncan and I have finished our little discussion. You must admit, it's hardly beach weather, is it? We must act now before the flood. Gather the townsfolk. We will stack the sandbags to the north, south, and east. Still time if we hurry. Look lively now, soldier. No, 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 you can't dump these sandbags here. Just, just, just wait a moment, Major, please. Tom Dithering, you dunderhead. The town's being swept under. It's now being swept under, Major. And you're beginning to be a public nuisance. Afternoon, Wallace. Thinking weather, eh, Wallace? It is rather gloomy. Like my business. Not a single customer all day. My sizzling summer sale has lost its sizzle. I'm afraid my summer sale won't be very sizzling this year. Sorry to hear that. Major Crom is getting agitated. Hope he doesn't barricade my shop like he did last time. You got out of the honey business at the right time. I haven't sold a jar since... Well, you know. Blinking weather, eh? It is like my... What's the latest cheese of the week, I wonder? Stilton? And that reminds me. I just sent the truck out with your delivery. When you return home, you'll find it waiting patiently on your doorstep. Ah, just like Gromit. You know, Mr. Wallace, there's nothing like coming home to a faithful, loyal cheese. I quite agree. You'll find the week's delivery waiting on your doorstep. Cracking! That's quite a light, Mr. Paneer. It's a searchlight. I say, no shortage of candle power there. Bright as the sun, don't you think? Wonderful for bringing in the big spenders. When the weather's fair, that is. I wonder, Mr. Penier, where might a person acquire such a lump? I'd be happy to lend you this one, but if the weather warms up tonight, I'll need it to advertise my super sore away sizzling summer sale. Oh. Oh, yeah. It's a stack of Stilton. Oh. Was that the earth-shaking roar of thunder? Uh, well, actually, uh... It doesn't matter when it comes to the complex question of climate. A person should never really rely on his own senses. Only the experts really understand the weather. Oh? Thunder, I hear? Uh, not exactly. Uh, didn't think so. After all, you can't tell what the weather's doing just by looking and listening, can you? You've got to rely on the experts. Oh, ho! A special order for 62 West Wallaby Street. Stilton, one of my favorites. <clears throat> it is a bit damp. You see, Duncan, I'm not going gallivanting in a thunderstorm. Gallop what? Brace up, lass. There's no thunderstorm. You can't hear no thundering, can you? Maybe I can hear thundering. Just hush your guns for a moment, will you? 
Oh, yeah, it's mouth-watering. Oh, my gracious! That's thunder, all right. And it's nearly upon us. Oh, but sure, it may be thundering, but... But do you see lightning? There's no lightning to bother about us, sir. Oh, no, you don't. I'm not going to stay out here with you waiting to be struck by lightning. I'm going to seek shelter, and if you've any sense at all, Duncan McBiscuit, you'll do the same. Good day. What? Oh. What are you looking at, Jimmy? I'll just borrow this. Just the thing for our cellar-based indoor beach experience. Nice to see you, Wallace. No beach brawlies left. Sorry. A big burly bloke bought the last one. He weren't very polite about it. Have a pleasant day. No water shortage this summer, that's for certain. Two fine flavours that work well together. That's a nice sentiment. Hello, hello. Good afternoon, Mrs. Gabberly. Hello, Wallace. Lovely weather, isn't it? Well, uh, I, uh... I'm joking, Pat. I know it's rotten. Had to cancel me holiday. That's a shame. Certainly is, being stuck with old misery guts here. I heard that! He don't miss a word I say, except when I ask him to do something. Ah! Sitting behind a till all day ain't exactly hard labour. What would you know about hard labour? I could run this place a sight better than you, if I had a mind to. If you had a mind? What will it be, Niels? It's good to see you, Wallace. But where's that clever dog of yours? Oh, just doing his chores around the house. Oh, he's a good Niels. Did you hear the latest? Miss Flit's got a gentleman admirer. Folks say he's an old flame. Can you imagine? Uh... Not that she needs any more admirers flirting like she does. <clears throat> You're right about that. What about the weather, eh? And it's supposed to be summer. It is a bit nippy. Nippy? It's got more bite than Mr. Gabbley's dentures. Major Crumb's causing a fuss, like he always does when the weather turns. Oh? Thinks he's still on active service and has to save the world. Looking for something to read? Take your pick. I'll put it on your slate. Never imagined you was the sporting type. Found what you wanted, I trust. Changed your mind, did you? Go ahead and swap, love. I know who that's for. Changed your mind, did you? Go ahead and swap, love. Those sunglasses are quite a spectacle. Not your usual reading material, is it? Changed your mind, did you? Go ahead and swap, love. That's pure tittle-tattle, that is. I read it from cover to cover. Changed your mind, did you? Go ahead and swap, love. More rotten weather on the way tonight, they say. All set. Hey, make sure he don't nick any sweets. Mind your own business. 
That old misery guts thinks he could run this shop. Oof, he couldn't run a bath. Not helpful, that. Felicity's garden has some fragrant blooms. Aye, she does give off a scent, that one. Ta-ra, Stormy weather ahead, I'm afraid. Oh? Oh, no. After all that, my sizzling summer sail is ruined. I go on holiday, but the weather's a washout. Will the sun never shine on yours truly? Even in this chill, Felicity's flowers are doing well. Wish I could say the same for my shop. That's a good-looking trolley. Where do you buy it? It's on loan, actually, from Miss Flit. That's all right, then. Don't want my favorite customer having to shop around, eh? I say, I wonder where a person might acquire such a light. You're welcome to borrow this one, Mr. Wallace. There won't be any sizzling summer sale tonight. Not in this blinking weather. That's very kind of you. Always happy to help. Oh, oh, oh. this light'll make a smashing sun. Our constable likes to keep a tight lid on irregular activity. The constable's busy, uh, chatting with the Major. Prison's an unhappy fate. I once had a friend banged up in there. Um. Yes, soldier? Out with it. Uh, well, uh, if you'd like to unload these sandbags, I know just the spot. Just as I told you, the people are pleading for sand, and we've got to give it to them. I'd like to give it to you, you loony old goat. But if you've got a need for sandbags, Wallace, I hereby grant you permission. Oh? You grant permission? Indeed. Take all you want, Wallace. Infernal cheek! I'm the commanding officer here, you jumped up Jobsworth, and I hereby revoke permission. Can't you be cooperative just this once, Major? Cooperative? Don't know the meaning of the word. Sounds subversive to me. All right, Major, how about this? Why don't we ask Wallace here who's in command? This young Tongo? Very well. Why not? Tell us, soldier, who holds rank here? Remember your training. Well, the Major is a... a Major. Ah! ah! Just so. Now, stand down, or I'll have you clapped in irons. You may have the sandbags, Wallace. I grant you permission. I deny you permission to grant permission. Yes, I give the orders round here. Now, who's being uncooperative? I'm the authority here, and what I say goes. Uh, ain't that right, Wallace? Back me up here. Well, the constable is, uh, an officer of the law. Aha! Like I told you, I call the shots in this district. The sandbags are yours, Wallace. They are not! But you're the one who wanted to dump them, Major. That was before you waltzed in and tried to usurp my authority. Wallace, kindly tell the Major here who the officer in charge is, will you? That's right, soldier. Inform this non-combatant nincompoop where his duty lies. Two 
find flavors that work well together. We are talking about who's in charge, not flavors. Just a moment. Are you saying that instead of bickering over who's in charge, we should be working together as a team, like uh, steak and kidney? Uh, are you saying that in a crisis like this, we must act as one, like a well-trained commando unit? Actually, it's a sign... Exactly, a sign that we can now rise above our squabbles. Very well, then. Um, here's what we'll do. We'll send these sandbags off with you. Thank goodness. Well, I'll be off then. I can hear an hot meat pie calling me name. Yes, I can. Ernest Dibbins, it's saying. It's tea time. Fetch the blinking ketchup, Ernest. Now then, soldier. All I need is your requisition form. Requisition form? That's right. Got to play by the book. Can't let the spies sabotage operations, can we? Spies? Surely you've heard about the spies from abroad. They're everywhere. Don't look so rattled, man. Just bring me your requisition form, and you'll soon be neck deep in splendid sandbags. Oh, right then. I'm still waiting for that requisition form. Chop, chop, soldier. Perhaps this... Perhaps you can produce some proper paperwork, eh? Perhaps this... Perhaps you can produce some proper paperwork, eh? It's only for cheese, but... Give that here. Good heavens. Special orders? Deliver to 62 West Wallaby Street. You've done the service proud, soldier. Now stand clear. No time for chitter-chatter. I'm needed in West Wallaby Street. Uh, uh, yes, sir. build a proper beach without it. Look from it, a beach load of sand. Just need to drop it into the cellar. Whoops a daisy. There we go. Top hole! All the sand we need. The Riviera, here we come. Great news, Gromit. All the goods have been gathered. Now it's time for some elbow grease, eh? To the cellar. Job done, Gromit. Time to relax on the beach, eh? We deserve a holiday. Just a minute. Such a lovely beach. It's a shame to keep it to ourselves when we could share it with paying customers. Just imagine, West Wallaby Street Water World. A genuine beach house, complete with its own all-weather seaside in the cellar basement beach attraction. Oh, oh, we'll be surrounded by happy holiday makers. It'll be grand, Gromit. This man's ruining my blinking holiday. Half a mind to take my book to the Don't get sand and go in your home. sandwich. I was only teasing. Just ask that great big pudding Shut there. Up. I ain't no pudding yet. These dogs are disturbing time. the peace. Bylaws state that all livestock must what be kept under the proper control in public places. Fly, and they're not livestock. I want a refund. I want a refund and all. Refunds would indeed appear to be in order, Mr. Wallace. What do you say? Uh, uh, um, 
Well, here at West Wallaby Street, Waterworld, customer satisfaction is our top priority. If you'll just be patient, I promise we'll have everything under control by supper time. Uh... You've got till supper time, no later. Not much of an holiday so far, I'm sorry to say. Mm, those mutts are a threat to public <laughs> safety. They shop and dust a bit in fruit display. Calling my dears livestock. We can't afford to give refunds, Gromit. We've spent all our money doing the house up. This could be a financial disaster. What are we gonna do, lad? I never thought we'd have a house full of unhappy holiday makers. Bunch of morning minis, if you ask me. I'm having a grand old time. Well, that's one satisfied customer, anyway. There we are. This customer relationship management isn't so hard, is it, Gromit? There's hope for our little venture yet. You'd best get supper started. Make it a feast to remember. I'll see to our guests. We'll soon have a house full of happy campers, eh, lad? Enjoying your holiday, I hope, Major? Oh, yes, absolutely. Dashed comfortable billet you have here. Oh, uh, thank you. We strive to achieve complete customer satisfaction. That wasn't so hard. Put that thing down and pay attention! Oh. I am about to reenact one of the greatest desert battles of history, the Siege of Aqaba. Not many know the tale. It was late 1914, or was it 1916? It was an even year of that, I'm sure. On the one side was a single British soldier, T.E. Lawrence, better known to you civvies as Sir Lawrence of Olivier. On the other, the invading army of the Ottoman Empire, thousands strong. You know the story. Lawrence single-handedly defended a desert fortress from a massive attack. He had only one rifle and no ammunition. He was all alone, just like this. Lawrence watched the enemy from a secret vantage point sheltered by enormous red boulders. <laughs> anyway, as the enemy massed, vultures began to circle overhead, crying out in their desperate thirst for blood. <laughs> anyway, now at this point your average Joe would have thrown in the towel and anything else he had to hand. But what do you think our Lawrence did? He took tea! <laughs> anyway, Lawrence was about to dunk his digestive when suddenly... Oh, blast and bother! This isn't right! Not quite historically accurate, I'm afraid. I'll have to start again. Just a moment. Ouch! I wouldn't want anyone to step on that toy by mistake. It's not a toy, and you can't have it. The battle isn't over. Your searchlight is just what West Wallaby Street Waterworld needed, Mr. Paneer. Everything satisfactory, I hope? No, not satisfactory at all. A certain Scottish gentleman has been deconstructing my constructions. Perhaps the management could have a word with him. I'm afraid Mr. McBiscuit is rather difficult to pin down. You've got to do something. If I can't finish my sandcastle, I'll have to insist on a refund. Your castle looks very handsome, Mr. Paneer. Such charming little bucket shapes. I do admire creative artists like yourself. Oh, thank you, Miss Flit. At least someone appreciates art and craft. Look, it's almost done. What do you reckon? Uh, very nice. That's the Enchanted Tower, where the beautiful princess sleeps, dreaming of a successful marriage to a financially secure prince. That's the Tower of Groceries, where the heroic young shopkeeper sells top quality produce. Impressive architecture, don't you think? Oh, uh, yes. That's the royal court where the king holds sumptuous banquets for all his royal chums. That's the horrible dungeon where the mean bullying knight is kept locked in chains. I should look in on our other guests. 
but I'm nearly done. Just one last touch. There. The perfect finishing touch. The mark of finest quality produce. Ye. Miss Flit's going to be impressed. Oh, hi. She'll be ever so impressed, I'm sure. Oh, no. Uh, whoops, my foot slipped. Silly me. <laughs> my castle. Stomped on by a tartan heel. See what I have to put up with? A holiday's not a blinking holiday if I can't finish my sandcastle. Now I have to start all over. How's the old sandcastle going? I'm not ready for viewing, Mr. Wallace. I trust everything at West Wallaby Street Waterworld is to your satisfaction, Miss Flit. We strive to satisfy. It's sweet of you to ask, Mr. Wallace. I'm having a wonderful time. All this drama swirling around me. But I remain an oasis of calm in the hurly-burly of holiday madness. Oh, glad to hear it. I think I'm getting the hang of this. Anything I can do for you, Miss Flit? Oh, stop it, Wallace. Your mate, Duncan, jealous. Everything tickety-boo? As tickety-boo as can be, thank you. I hope you find the facilities here at West Wallaby Street Waterworld to your liking. Positively tingling with satisfaction, Mr. Wallace. Anything I can do for you, Miss Flit? Oh, stop it. Oh, you like this, Wallace. I've been longing for a new look, and I quite fancy this one. Very incognito, don't you think? My own babies wouldn't recognize me in this get-up. Uh, I'm afraid fashion isn't really my forte, Miss Flit. Nonsense. What man is immune to the allure of a well-dressed woman? That's my next new look. Isn't it exciting? Can you picture me in a get-up like this? I'm not sure that I can. That's the idea. I'll be unrecognizable. How funny. That sounded just like my little darling's chew toy. work, eh, Gromit? That's what I like to see. We'll soon have a house full of happy holiday makers, never fear. Oh, cracking idea, lad. Everyone loves a copper. You'd best attend to your pots and pans, eh? How's supper coming along, lad? Best hold off until our customers are all happy, eh? Won't be long now. That doesn't make any sense. I'd better stay here and see to our guests. A bevy of brollies to think of all the trouble I went through to get just one. Word with you if you please. Mm. 
Comet won't mind if I borrow this. Enjoying your stay at West Wallaby Street, Waterworld, Constable? I'm this close to having your establishment shut down. Shut down? You heard me. These dogs are a public nuisance and an elf hazard and all. Oh dear. Went bonkers, they did. And all because I tried to clear away that horrible little toy of theirs. I don't approve of litter, you know. I believe Miss Flitter... I warned Felicity Flitter, no. And now she must face the full force of the law. I'm issuing a formal caution for the disruption of lawful quietude. It's the third I've had to write today. The third? Aye, the first two got eaten. Give this one to Miss Flit and tell her to remove her animals or I'll be forced to shut the place down. Show that formal caution to Miss Flit. Either she deals with these creatures or I shut the whole place down. Cute little fellas. Oh my. Oh, I say, Gromit never reacts like that. Watch your fingers. You don't like anyone touching the toy. Care for some tea, Constable? The law can't stop for a cuppa. As much as the law might like to. May I interest you in... Uh... Yeah. That seems to be in working order. The camera loves her, and she loves it back. A man of action, our major. Except when he's resting, of course. Big fella. This needs ironing, it does. Rather photogenic, if I say so myself. Biscuit, may I uh, have a word? Oh! Uh, later then. Crikey, the infrastructure's getting a lot of wear and tear. Trouble springs eternal, it seems. Very fashionable. I'm not dressed for water sports. Bit gloomy out there. Safety first. All in working order.
I've deactivated Gromit's call box for the moment. He needs to stay focused on supper. Not supper time yet, is it, lad? Sorry about that. Having a bit of fun. <laughs> Silicon flowers. Lovely, but not particularly fragrant. Our guests do love the water slide. Well, one of them does anyway. That was a fine holiday, but this one's bound to be even better, once our guests are satisfied. That's my automated ocean breeze simulator. Sharp as a knife. Beg pardon? Oh, uh... Anything I can do for you, Mrs. Gabberly? Oh, dear. Oh, what a mess I am! But it's me own fault for letting that mangy McBiscuit get under me skin. Why should I care what he says? As me mum taught me, sticks and stones will break your bones, but silly names can never hurt you. Hey! Here comes trouble! Yeah, big fat pudding! <laughs> big fat pudding? No, oh, it's true enough, I know it. I'm out of shape for a beach holiday. Perhaps I should just get me refund and go home. Oh, no. That's kind of you, but it's no good. I can't be talked out of a mood like this, can I? Oh, well, I... Uh... It's not just me, is it? What do you think of Duncan McBiscuit? A bit of romance. <laughs> romance? I'd say he's the opposite of romance. No, oh, I'm a making sense. Do you catch my drift? Fresh as a daisy. Mm, I can't say as I understand you, Wallace. Hey, you're in a right mess you are, Winnie Gabbley, and no mistake. What to do? What to do? Health food. Oh, are you saying I'm fat? No, oh, who am I kidding? I've always been big bold. I should count me blessings. At least my new outfits. That's something, isn't it? A sad thing. Sad? And there I go, thinking of something to be happy about. Oh, it's a sorry old world, isn't it? Thanks to the bullies. That's a stinky cheese. I'm not sure what that's supposed to mean. I'd go home to Mr. Gabberly, but there's no point. Won't get no sympathy from him indoors, will I? A bit of romance. Oh, cheeky. But yes, Gabberly does have his romantic side. Occasionally. Oh, you're a real good listener, you are, Wallace. He happen to may be knocking on. Too old for a beach holiday, that's for sure. Fresh as a daisy. Oh, I don't know about that. But it's ever so kind of you to say so. Glad you're here, Wallace. Oh, what do I know? I'm going soft in the head, aren't I? Sharp as a knife. 
Well now, that's kind of you to say so, Wallace. You know what? Winnie Gabberley's had enough of feeling sorry for herself. So what if I'm a bit like a pudding? I've tangled with giant bees, I have. I can take care of a bullying McBiscuit any day. Thank you, Wallace. You've a right kindly way with words, you have. Uh, glad to be of service. I'll be fine now, Pat. Reckon I'll finish my story. Hey! In there, you big! Fight. Shut your trap, you tartan tear away, or I'll box your ears! Hmm, I do like a good book. No need for a refund, then? Oh, no. I'm as happy as Larry me. Oh, another happy camper. There's nothing like a cup of tea. Oh, keep it down, love. I could do with some peace and quiet round here. Sorry. Clear as glass. What are you rabbiting on about now? Oh, nothing. Anything you need, Mrs. Gabberly? Oh, no, dearie. I'm as happy as a sandboy. Thanks. Anyone for beach ball? Hmm? Oh, no, no thanks, Pat. Wouldn't be prudent. Care for a warmer upper? Get pouring. May I offer you a spot of tea, Major? Of course. Sharpens the wits. Any interest in this? Perfect! Just like the great boulders of the Akaba Desert! Care for a kick around, Major? No time to play ball, man! There's a battle to be reenacted! Any interest in a flag? Some foreign thing? Of course not. Care for some protection from the sun's glare. Not my style. Ouch! I wouldn't want anyone to step on that toy by mistake. It's not a toy! You're in luck, my boy! I was just about to reenact the Siege of Akaba. Do you know the story? Sir Lawrence took cover under massive red boulders. Just like this. Vultures circled the sky, crying out for blood. Just like this, our Lawrence, cool as a cabbage, took tea. <laughs> Just like this, 
Lawrence was taking tea and about to dunk his digestive when suddenly 10,000 howling Ottoman soldiers charged the fortress. Tea was ruined, obviously. But did Lawrence of Olivier give up? Never! He took his rifle and levered the great red boulders down the dunes, rolling them straight into the enemy horde. With the invaders in disarray, Lawrence, armed only with his bayonet, and still desperate for cover, counterattacked. He took them on one by one until he achieved total and complete victory! I'll just tidy this up. Dreaming of great battles, no doubt. Enjoying your stay? Not until my castle is complete. Have a look, it's almost done. As you can see, I've rearranged everything. It's even better than before. I see. That's the enchanted tower, where the beautiful princess sleeps, dreaming of a successful marriage to a financially secure prince. That's the horrible dungeon, where the mean bullying knight is kept locked in chains. That's the royal court, where the king holds sumptuous banquets for all his royal chums. Hey, this little fella might enhance your sandcastle. A knight to defend the castle, eh? Why not? It couldn't hurt. Just one last touch. There. The mark of finest quality produce. I can't wait to show Miss Flit. And I'm sure she can't wait to see. Oh, no. Uh, sort of saw a spider. <laughs> My castle. I've been wrong-footed. I'm at my wit's end, Wallace. Now I have to start all over. Hello there. Care to play ball? Oh, I'd rather not. I'm at the spire. May I offer you some tea? Oh, you're sweet as honey, but no tea for me, thank you. It makes me windy. Isn't this a charming little fella? That bayonet looks dangerous. You boys and your silly toys. Would a ball give you some bounce, Mr. Paneer? Oh no, I must focus on my castle, thanks. Would you like a flag for your sandcastle? Hmm, that flag's not quite a scale, I'm afraid. Care for some tea, Mr. Paneer? No, thank you, Wallace. I'm too busy for tea. Making progress? I'm almost done. Have a look. As you can see, I've rearranged everything. It's even better than before. I see. That's the enchanted tower, where the beautiful prince... That's the royal court, where the... That's the tower of groceries, where the heroic young shopkeeper sells top quality produce. Impressive architecture, don't you think? Oh, uh, yes. Just one last touch. There. The mark of finest quality produce. I hope Miss Flit likes it. Oh, she'll love it, I'm sure. Oh, no. Uh, oh, my boot! My poor tender boot! It was a blasted sand trap! Oh, oh, oh! Oh, oh, oh! Well, then. Should be able to work in peace now, I reckon. Oh, well, jolly good. Oh. 
now for the finishing touch. The defender of the kingdom. However do you manage such lovely creations, Mr. Paneer? It's a knack, Miss Flit. If I hadn't made it into grocer school, I might have been an engineer. But of course, groceries are my first love. Ah, uh, anything else I can assist with? No, thank you, Mr. Wallace. You may consider me a happy camper and most satisfied customer. We do aim to please. Still tinkering, eh? I've surpassed perfection. It's even better than before, don't you think? Oh, yes. Still touching up the old sandcastle, eh? Like an unfinished symphony, an artist's work is never truly done. Constable Dibbins has requested... Constable Dibbins is mistaken. Hoochie Woo and Tinky Wee would never misbehave. They did seem a touch rambunctious. Oh, very well. Let's get this over with. Behave, or I'll have you banged up in the kennels. Ah, oh, that's more like it. What's this nonsense about my doggies? Ah, there you are, Miss Flit. Your doggies are causing a breach of the peace. They're behaving like... Uh, well, like animals. <gasps> How could you say such a thing? Only telling it like it is. Disturbing the peace, are they? Well, they were until you came in. Constable, if I ever see my doggies behaving badly, I shall reprimand them myself, believe me. But just look at them. They're as sweet and innocent as pink icing sugar. What? What? Why don't you find some other tiny, defenceless creatures to harass and leave my babies alone? Babies? <laughs> Hooligans more like. Hello again. Any interest in this? Oh, thank you, Mr. Wallace. What a lovely scarf. Actually, it's a... Uh... Such vibrant colour and such a pretty pattern. It's perfect for my new look. Isn't it splendid? I have the scarf, I just need the glasses. Would you like these sunglasses? Oh, wonderful, Mr. Wallace. Very stylish. I'll use these for my new look. My new look is complete. Just a moment, you're in for a surprise. Ta-da! What do you think, Wallace? Am I not mysterious? Uh, quite mysterious, yes. <gasps> oh, where's Felicity? Where did Miss Flit go? Uh... Here I am! <laughs> we do have fun, Wallace, don't we? I love my new Luke. You can't even tell it's me, can you? Uh, I... I'm so pleased you share my passion for fashion, Mr. Wallace. We have so much in common. I think my new Luke is rather a success. My own babies wouldn't recognize me in this, would they? Oh, well, well... I wonder if it isn't time for a new, new loop. Uh... It's going to be such fun. I can't wait. 
Constable Dibbins was wandering... Again? Oh, let's get this over with. Threatening behaviour towards an officer of the law, that's a serious offence, that is. Don't think I won't lock you up, cos I will. This is your final, final warning. like that. Cupcakes? My darlings, did the bad man upset you? Don't be scared. Mummy's here now. How about a little dressing up game to make it all better? Do you want to play dress up? Oh, yes you do. Yes you do. Oh, come along my sweets. <sighs> She's lucky I didn't throw those mutts in the kennels. Now, with this glow, Sour, you can only push PC Ernest Dibbins so far. I hope your holiday is proceeding in a satisfactory manner, Constable. Satisfactory? Hmm. Yes. Yes, indeed. Everything appears to be quite satisfactory, peaceful and in order. Thank you, Wallace. Champion, we're getting there. Ha-ha! At last! A house full of satisfied customers! Just as I predicted! I'd best tell Gromit to lay the table! I must compliment our host! I've had a cracking holiday! Oh, thank goodness for that. It was a near thing though, wasn't it? Oh, smell those fish and chips. We can look forward to superior chow here in the office's mayor's one. Mm. The tableware doesn't seem to be in breach of any health and safety regulations. Enforcement's the key, of course. You smell like heaven, lassie. Did you buy a new perfume for our date? Oh, really, Duncan? That's just the flower in my hair. And I'm not sure I'd call it a date. Uh, um, uh, before we tuck in, on behalf of the management, that is, Gromit and me, I'd like to welcome you all to our new venture. West Wallaby Street Waterworld, the only holiday destination with its own all-weather seaside in the cellar basement I have beach a few words to say myself. Raise your glasses. Raise them, I said. To a great day with a great glass. The sweetest sights I ever smelled. That's right, I'm talking about... Hey! Who turned out the... Ah, what's all this? Who's there? Oliver! Take my last breath. You found me just in time. 
I've located the victim. Mr. McBiscuit has sustained a nasty knock to the noggin and don't remember now about it. Happily, he will recover. However, aggravated thumping is a serious offence and I've no choice but to treat every one of you as suspects. Outrageous! <gasps> but I never Suspects? <coughs> Until our thumper is caught, nobody leaves this house. Nobody comes in. And nobody goes out. Not till I know the person who done it. I know who did it. Spies from abroad. Saboteurs from the South Sea. Thank you, Major. That's enough of your doolally chatter for now. Only cold hard facts can solve this mystery. Solve this mystery? That's right. By the book. You know, uh, burden of innocence and uh, proof of purchase and all that. That's our real investigations. Now, what's that contraption? My latest prototype, Constable. The Deductomatic Mystery Solver. Deductomatic? Is that what's been taking money out of my savings account? Oh, no, Mrs. Gabberly. The Deductomatic harnesses unused brain power to solve mysteries. If you're pointing the finger, Wallace, any accusation must be backed up by hard fact and proven according to the law. Well, I... Uh, that is, it should be working. Aha! I've got it! All right then! Tell us, Wallace, who thumped Duncan McBiscuit? Who done it? Who done it? Oh, that can't be right. We're waiting. Uh, 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 just a moment. Any idea who done it, lad? You wouldn't mind pointing him out, would you? I'll solve who done it for sure. Gromit won't let me down. It was, uh, me? Ah, so you confess? Oh, I pray you didn't attack Duncan because of me. Come off, big Wallace wouldn't hurt a fly. Duncan, someone would be right out of character. No, throw your life away, dear Wallace. It's not worth it. A lifetime in prison. The deductomatic may need a bit more warm-up time. Would you like to reconsider your accusation? Oh, uh, yes. It was Constable Dibbins. Oh, that's an outrageous slur. But you were sitting just by, Duncan, weren't you? And the police truncheon were invented for thumping, weren't it? Now you're in a pickle, Constable. I'm, 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 I'm completely innocent. I didn't do it. It's a logical impossibility, and you can't argue with logical impossibilities. I can argue the iron legs off a donkey, Mr. Gabberly says. Logic has naught to do with it. Wallace, I'm sure you didn't mean to accuse me, did you? Nobody leaves the room until I say so. The Gong did it. King Kong? That's absurd, man. Stop monkeying about. For once, I must agree with the Major. The Toy Shovel did it. Preposterous. He's one banana short of a fruit salad, that man. No, I think he's a hoot. Toy shovels don't attack people. You have to do more spade work than that. It was Mr. Paneer. Just a minute. You must be off your trolley, Wallace. Do you wish to confess, Mr. Paneer? Of course I do. I mean, I don't. I didn't don't. It didn't thump no one, I mean. But you did have a motive. You resented Mr. McBiscuit for vandalizing your sandcastle. That's enough. It's obvious Mr. Paneer ain't guilty. He were holding me and the old time. That's right. 
soon as the lights went out, he clutched me hand with a grip like a buzzard. I tried to shake him off, but he wouldn't let go till the dark lifted. He were right here beside me the whole time. Is that true, Mr. Paneer? Then it seems you have a cast iron alibi, which clears you of the accusation. It was Felicity Flit. Horace! Is that true, Miss Flit? Of course not. Why would I hurt poor Duncan? Rumour has it Miss Flit and Mr. McBiscuit are old friends. More than friends, I'd wager. Duncan is just a friend. Just like Wallace is a friend. Ooh. At least I thought he was. Perhaps I was mistaken. It was Mrs. Gabberly. Ooh. Ooh, how could you say that? I'll ask the questions. Duncan McBiscuit did insult you, did he not, Mrs. Gabberly? I happen. And that made you angry, did it not? I happen. So, you were insulted and angry. Just said so, didn't I? Insulted and angry enough to kill. Don't be daft. No one's been killed. He took a clout at Noggin, that's all. You seem to know all about it, Mrs. Gabberly. How come? Me? I can say for certain that Mrs. Gabberly is not the thumper. When the lights went out, I... I took Vinnie's hand. I didn't want her to feel frightened. And she stayed right there beside me till the lights came back on. That's right! You're a lucky woman, Mrs. Gabberly. Seems you have what we in the business call an alibi. No accusation can survive in the face of a strong alibi. The fan did it. Oh, did it blow Duncan away? I'm not a fan of this theory, Wallace. But it was Major Crumb. Nonsense! It was spies from abroad! The Major had no cause to thump Duncan. Unless the Major was confused. Perhaps he mistook Mr. McBiscuit for one of those spies of his. Mistake a 20 stone Scot for a native of the South Seas? Have you lost your mind, Constable? The slide did it. Of course. Duncan fell down the slide, slid to the beach, and were buried on impact. You're incredible, Wallace. Aye, as in not credible at all. It was Poochie Woo and Tinky Wee. <laughs> Two wee pups laying junk and low. That's daft, that is. Aye, <laughs> silly that. <laughs> idea of accusing my dear doggies. How absurd! Aye, quite absurd. <laughs> absurd, <laughs> eh? Nothing is absurd before the law. Here we go. It is the absurd claims the law takes most seriously. For, if the absurd cannot expect justice and a fair hearing, then who among us can? He's got a point. We must treat this accusation according to the law. The law requires proof. Proof requires... Uh, hold on. Proof requires three things. First, the motive. Why? Did the suspect thump Duncan McBiscuit? Second, the weapon. What was he thumped with? Third, a witness. Who can collaborate? C -c -c Corroborize it. Uh, back up your accusation. Do you have a motive, a weapon, and a witness, Mr. Wallace? Uh, I'll just recalibrate the inference-ometers. There we are. What'll it be? Motive, weapon, or witness? Hmm, where to begin? Of course, now we'll get the facts. Get what facts? Uh, the weapon. I've determined the weapon. Well done. Tell us what, um, what you podge in Winky T used to thump Duncan. Well, out with it, man. Uh, uh, um, just a moment. 
Do you have anything resembling a weapon, lad? I could use one sharpish. The weapon is this toy shovel. You honestly expect us to believe that that little piece of plastic knocked Mr. McBiscuit out gold? Just trying to dig out the truth, Constable. When you're in a hole, Wallace, the best advice is stop digging. This weapon you're suggesting don't hold water. Uh, ooh. Oh, it was working. All right, that's enough of that. Everyone can go about their normal business, but remember, nobody leaves the house until the mystery is solved. Once I have the deductomatic properly calibrated, this case will be elementary, dear Gromit, elementary. In the meantime, why don't you, uh, sniff up some clues for the deductomatic to process, eh, lad? You might start with the constable there. I expect he's got some juicy leads. I've got the suspects right where I want them. Written down on the official constabulary notepad. I'll crack the case with this, I will. It's got to be one of these three, but which one? Ah, the motive. Likely to be some physical object. I remember a case a few years back where the motive was a turnip, with two blokes claiming the groin rights. Right, the weapon. I'll wager it's a blunt object. Your more polite objects rarely do much thumping. Hmm, yes. The witness. Likely to be a person. Your vegetables and minerals don't generally have much to offer in the way of witnessing. I'm afraid our supper gong won't be seeing any more use this evening. Those are artificial flowers, lad. Attractive to the eye, but not to the nose, eh? That's my automated ocean breeze simulator. Silicon flowers. Lovely, but not particularly fragrant. Simpler times, eh, lad? Watch your step from it. That's a slippery slope. It's on the blink at the moment, I'm afraid. I'll get it working soon enough, never fear. Who would have thought our little do-it-yourself beach resort would be the scene of a crime? All we need to solve the mystery is a motive a weapon, and a witness. The deductomatic should convince the constable soon enough, eh, lad? Just a bit more tinkering and I'll be solving mysteries left and right. Maybe we'll find out where you buried that last bone of yours, eh? Don't fret about the thumper, old friend. I'll identify the culprit soon enough. The deductomatic will tell us what happened. Just a few more bugs to, uh, debug. I've deactivated your core box, Gromit. Never fear, I'll put it right after our guests have gone. You shouldn't eat candy floss, Mr. Paneer. Bad for your teeth. Oh, I'm not eating it. I just like having something to hold. 
You must try to stop worrying so. What? It's Thumper. Who knows where he'll strike next? I don't think there is a Thumper. I think Duncan just fell over and wandered off by himself. He's a clumsy oaf, you know. Aye, he is heavy on his feet, that's for sure. He'll bounce back. He always does. It's Poochie Woo and Tinky Wee I'm worried about. Those silly accusations hurt their feelings. I just hope playing dress-up will lift their spirits. A new look is a tonic for the soul, don't you find? Great, I don't know how to play dressing up games as it happens. Doggy dress-up, silly. I just need to pick the right outfits. So many to choose from. Ah, oh, it's only you, Gromit. For a moment, I thought... Well, never mind. I'm sorry, lad, but if you want some candy floss, you'll have to get your own. I'm rather... attached to mine. Ah, oh... Thank you, Gromit. Oh, I've already got some, and I intend to hold on to it. Do you like the pretty pictures? He thinks he's so important. Oh, Mrs. Gabbly is as cute as kittens, or uh, strays, anyway. The mayor just seems to have lost his bearings. Not my best shot. It's your master, Gromit. His holiday didn't turn out quite the way he planned, did it? He's like a little boy, crazy for candy floss. My poor little Duncan. All he wanted was to take me out on a date. Perhaps I'll let him. If we ever get out of here. He looks so happy. My poor little darlings. They love a fashion shoot. But they were so agitated they couldn't sit still. Do you know what upset them? Some horrid person stole Mr. Squeaky. Isn't that awful? Mr. Squeaky's only a bone, but he's absolutely their favorite toy. The three of them are inseparable. Personally, I think it was that constable. Who else could be so cruel as to steal from a couple of helpless little puppies? Artificial blossoms may look pretty, but they don't smell like much. No thank you. Certainly not. That stuff is poison on a stick. Hello there, Gromit. Would you like to play a doggy dress-up? Lovely, in lederhosen and a little alpine cap. Perhaps a fairy princess outfit with a tiara. I know, a cowboy get-up with chaps and a sheriff's badge. 
Hello there, Gromit. Ah, Gromit. You must know what the debonair dog likes. Why don't you help me pick an outfit for my precious darlings? Use your doggy fashion sense and choose your favorite hat, glasses and collar. They're show dogs, you know. Prize winners. That's a good choice. But one of my sailor hats is missing. Poochie Woo and Tinky Wee like to wear matching outfits. Exotic! Classic! Dressy! Poochie Woo and Tinky Wee will love this! Poochie Woo! Tinky Wee! Time for dress up, my dears. Oh, look at this. Hello. You found Mr. Squeaky. You clever things. I was afraid he'd never turn up. Now we're really ready for some fun, aren't we? Let's get dressed up. The poor things are shy. Would you mind leaving us alone for just a little while? <sighs> Aren't you cute? Yes, you are. <laughs> Run along and play. Aren't you cute? Yes, you are. <laughs> Run along and play. Checking provisions, eh? Good military planning. Who knows how long that fool of a civilian constable will keep us cooped up? Best start rationing now, before panic sets in and we have to eat our pack animals. Or each other. Good heavens! Someone here must be a member of the Cheese of the Week Club. This is no time for cooking. We need to conserve our rations until the last terrible hours. We'll need that heat to ward off frostbite, Private. I smell trouble ahead. Or burning plastic, anyway. Trying to cook up some caramel, are you? Better not. Might burn the house down or all that. No need to dig trenches yet. Too sweet and fluffy for a real soldier, Private. Watch your hindquarters, Private. There are spies about. Saw myself dragging off that Duncan chap. Not a pretty picture. This reminds me of the time I was cooped up in a chicken coop south of Toulouse. My company was pinned down for three days. Nothing to eat but a single croissant and a rotten egg. Have I told you the story, Private? They were the best of times. Or was it the worst of times? I can't recall. Glad you're here, Private. I've had enough of civilians thinking they can run things. Couldn't run at temperature, some of them. That's the spirit. Watch your hindquarters, Private.
Mr. Gabberly promised he'd run shop for me. Imagine him downstairs, face to face with actual customers. Oh, the constable won't even let you out for walkies, will he? Mr. Gabberly. He took quite a thumping, didn't he? Can't say he didn't deserve it. Still can't leave him to rot all on his lonesome. Someone's got to tend to the great lug. He's coming round. Ugh, my heat. Somebody stop the spanning. There's a whirlpool I'm in. Don't fret, Patch, you've had a nasty knock. Did you see who thumped you? No, but I can almost remember what hit me. The terrible weapon that laid me low, it... You saw the weapon what hit you? I, I think so. It was... Oh, I can't remember a thing. My brain's been boggled. Ooh, you've got amnesia, you have. Amnesia? Oh, no, that as well as a bind to the heat. Is it fatal? Just take things step by step, Chuck. What's the last thing you can remember? Well, I was upstairs, getting set for a jump junior on slide, but something wasn't right. Them little dogs of Felicity's were underfoot, and they wouldn't have shut their yaps. Duncan McBiscuit doesn't take guff from yapping wee dogs, so I grabbed that bone toy of theirs and took it away. They didn't like it one bit. Oh, no! Best part was, when I squeezed the wee toy, it drove them crazy, because it made this noise. This noise. Oh, what was that noise? I cannot recall. My brain's turned to haggis. Don't fret, Pat. Just rest. It'll come back to you. I was teasing them wee duggies with that toy of theirs. And it made a sound. A sound! Oh, no, it's all fading away. Oh, don't fuss yourself. You'll remember in time. Oh, that's no help. Mr. Gabberley's news agent, now open for business. It's 
not a customer, are you? Oi, you want to shop here? You gotta follow my rules. Yeah? Take what you like, and I'll put it on slate. Business will sort out payment later. Got that? Oi, and don't nick nothing while you're about it. Blimey, that were easy. I don't know why Winnie makes so much fuss. All the news without the nagging. Mr. Gabble is news agent, now open for business. Suspects know Summit, but who to question first? If I keep staring long enough, I'm sure I'll detect Summit eventually. Do you sense something, boy? Hmm, she clearly had a motive, and perhaps under that soft, knitted exterior lurks the soul of a hardened thumper. I must question her. Oh, I haven't got it. Uh, but you do admit you had a motive. He happened to dead, and I could have thumped him, buried him, and drowned him twice over since I've been down here. None of you lot seems worried about that, though. That can't be everywhere, Miss Gabberly. Not with so many suspects to interview. More important than changing the victim of the crime, is it? Look here. I can't stand around chatting all day. I have a thumper to catch. See that you don't leave the house. Little suspects, one of them's got to be the thumper. You can do this, Ernest Dibbins. Caught a scent, have you? Hmm, his motive is clear enough. But could this apparently gentle purveyor of fine groceries be a Jekyll and Hyde character, perhaps? A vicious thumper in disguise? I must interrogate him. Put that candy floss down while I'm interviewing you, if you please. Ooh. I'll ask you again, and this time I want a straight answer. Did you, or did you not, thump Duncan McBiscuit? Did you not? I mean, you did not. Uh, that is to say, me, not you. I mean, I mean, not you, me. But not me. I didn't, did you? That's not right. Uh... All right, that's enough. Just you watch yourself, Mr. Paneer, or I'll be watching you. Got it? Not another word. Phew. What happened to my little friend and protector? I'll have to spin up and over. Mm, 
personally, I prefer the timeless elegance of a jumper and tie. Thanks. Phew. Who knew a flower could be so nerve-wracking? So pretty! But I already have one, don't I? It's got to be one of these three. But which one? What is it, boy? Yes, I'll have a little chat with the Major. Perhaps he knows something he doesn't know he knows. If you don't believe me, I invite you to inspect the evidence. Are you having a laugh? Enough questions! We're wasting time! The spies could be signaling their ship. If they give away our position, we're done for! <sighs> All right, yes, fine. So tell me what these so-called spies of yours looks like. Don't mind if I do. It's dark. Dark as darkened room. Then the door cracked open, and I saw them, swarthy little men with sunken eyes and primitive tattoos, dragging Duncan's limp body. Sailors, judging by their uniforms, natives of the South Seas, I'd say. Stake my reputation on it. Did they look like this? No, no, no. Eyes more sunken, with heavy brows. That's better. Add nautical tattoos round their necks, and don't forget the uniform. There we are. A hint more menace. Just a hint now. Yes, now you've got it. Those are the villains I saw. Right, so this is what they look like, eh? Post that picture to every Jack Tar in the Navy. We've got to stop them before they make landfall. That's just what I'll do. The man means well, but he's a couple of bricks short of the full hod. Good to see you, Private. Never believed in flower power myself. Reading is no substitute for hard experience. Tempted to join the Navy, are you, Private? Sure, this time, Mr. Wallace. I'll summon the suspects. Right. You have accused Felicity's diminutive dogs of thumping Duncan McBiscuit. To prove it, you need a motive, a weapon, and a witness. Where do you want to start? Right. That's the one. What's the one? Uh, motive. I've solved the motive. Excellent! Tell us why uh, um, Wadgy Podge and Tinky Pink thumped Duncan McBiscuit. Well, out with it, man. Uh, uh, um, just a moment. Can you spare a motive, lad? I if you've got one, give it here. The motive is... me? Really? What did you do to make the pups thump Duncan? Uh, 
Uh, I'm not rightly sure. Uh, any suggestions? <sighs> Your motive doesn't stand up. Uh, ooh. Oh, uh, still a few folks in the system to winkle out. All right, that's enough of that. Move along now, everyone. The motive is Constable Dibbins. I don't see how I could have driven those doggies to thump poor Mr. McBiscuit. Don't deny denigrating my doggies. Dibbins doesn't dare. But I do deny being the motive. The motive is the gun. But what's the gun got to do with... Watchy Poo and Dinky Wink? Perhaps it irritated their precious little ears. You are certainly irritating mine. The motive is... Poojie Woo and Tinky Wee. Fascinating. Are you saying it was simply their own canine natures that motivated them to attack Mr. McBiscuit? That the wild animals within broke free and forced the adorable animals without to thump the Scotsman? Well, I, uh... I hardly think so, Mr. Wallace. The motive is... Mr. Paneer. He? Ridiculous. I agree with the Major. The motive is sabotage! That's what spies do. <sighs> the only thing sabotaged is my sanity. Spies! Yes, yes, we heard you the first time. Now, Wallace. The motive is Felicity Flit. Are you saying that Miss Flit's doggies attacked Mr. McBiscuit to save their mistress from some terrible event or threat to her person? Well, I, uh, uh... Was it blackmail? Uh, uh well, uh, I can't rightly say for sure. Then don't say out. <laughs> the motive is... Mrs. Gabberly. Why would them pups want to clout Duncan on my account? Perhaps money? Perhaps you paid him to do it in a contract thumping. Two teensy weensy doggies to thump Duncan. Oh, you daft ape! Yes, I mean no. I'm not a daft ape, but yes, you could have done. Well, I didn't. Oh, very well then. The motive is Major Crumb. The motive? Me? You're saying that. Uh, Watchy Podge and Tanky Wee thumped Duncan McBiscuit because of Major Crumb. <laughs> oh, you're such a hoot, Wallace. The motive is... the fam. Oh, come now. Why would them doggies thump Duncan on account of a fan? Did he block the breeze or summit? The motive is... the slide. I think we'll draw a curtain over that suggestion. Thank you, Wallace. The motive is this candy floss. You think Mr. McBiscuit was knocked out cold because of his relationship with candy floss? Was it a crime of passion? My darling little sugar plums don't even like candy floss. It's far too sweet. The motive is this flower. That flower made him thump Duncan. Perhaps it's a flower of Scotland. Never heard such tribe. The motive is this magazine. This really is most amusing. Do you reckon the pups read something that made him angry? <sighs> I very much doubt it, Mr. Paneer. But thank you for your contribution. The motive is this sailor's hat. If that's the motive, I'll eat my hat. But that hat's too big to eat, Mrs. Gabberly. I wish you'd just all put a sock in this hat business. The weapon is... Me? Bob the Dash. Rubbish! Puppy cook! 
Fiddle faddle. This weapon of yours ain't exactly convincing. Uh, the weapon is Constable Dibbins. Oh, your deductor Matic must have a loose nut. The weapon is the gong. What is this dumb junkin with a gong? How come we never heard out? The weapon is Poojie Woo and Tinky Wee. Them little pups couldn't drop a big brute like Duncan with their bare paws. Quite right. Some objects would have to be involved. The weapon is Mr. Paneer. The weapon is most certainly not a person. And if it were a person, it wouldn't be Mr. Paneer here. The weapon is Felicity Flit. Oh my! I've never heard such nonsense! That's enough now, Wallace. No, no, please go on. No, that's enough nonsense to be going on with. The weapon is Mrs. Gabberly. I know she's got a sharp tongue on her, but that's ridiculous. The weapon is the fan. Well, blow me down. <laughs> Your deductor thingamy appears to have blown a fuse, Wallace. The weapon is the slide. Neck. I reckon you've got a short circuit somewhere. The weapon is Major Crumb. Balderdash! The man's gone loco. He's knitting with only one needle. I think he's very amusing. The weapon is this candy floss. You think Great Big Junkum was knocked flat with a stick of candy floss? Man's one cheese sandwich short of a picnic camper. The weapon is this flower. But it's so pretty. Pretty darn ridiculous if you ask me. The weapon is this magazine. You can't knock a big bloke out, Cole, by swatting him with a magazine. I know, I've tried. The weapon is this sailor's hat. Oh, where did you find that? No matter where he found it, it's a tiny sailor's hat. You don't thump a man with a tiny sailor's hat. Cracking. Now we'll know the truth. The truth about what? Uh, the witness. I've identified the witness. Good show. Tell us who witnessed, um, uh, uh, Tinky Woo and Podgy Wee assaulting Mr. McBiscuit. Well, out with it, man. Uh, uh, um, just a moment. Uh, who would you pick for a witness, lad? The witness is this toy shovel. I think your invention's on the blink, love. Not just his invention that's on the blink. No. And this investigation's going the same way. The witness is this candy floss. Is that possible? Can the candy floss talk? Uh, I think your deductomatic still needs a bit of tinkering. The witness is this magazine. Whatever next, he'll be telling us the moon is made of cheese. The witness is this sailor's hat. Now you've gone overboard. Three sheets to the wind, more likely. The witness is me. Aha! So, what did you see? Well, uh... The lights went out. Yes, go on. And it was dark, and uh, then, uh... Yes? Uh, they came back on. <sighs> the lights came on. 
But was anyone home, I wonder? The witness is... Constable Dibbins. I didn't see a thing. Oh. The witnesses are... Poojie Woo and Tinky Wee. Whatever they saw, they're not talking, are they? The witness is... The Gong. Of course it is. And it's gonna bang out a statement in Morse code, I expect. The witness is... Mr. Paneer. You don't mean me, do you? How many other Paneers are there, then? Well, there's me, of course, and... So, what did you see? Did you see who delivered the thumping to Mr. McBiscuit? It was dark. I couldn't see a thing. I see. The witness is... Felicity Flip. Why? If you must know, I saw everything. I was sworn to secrecy. But now, I must confess. Confess? Yes, I saw it all. The evil Bambi and his cruel bunny rabbit servant, Thumper. They're the ones who thumped Duncan. <laughs> Are you having a laugh? <laughs> you should have seen your face. Oh, so serious. Oh, we're having fun now, aren't we? Oh, this is a splendid game. It's no laughing matter, Miss Flit. The witness is... Mrs. Gabberly. Me? I didn't see out. Only I could see them. Hairy little brutes in uniform. Sailors uh, from... Uh, <coughs> yes, Major. Thank you very much. The witness is... The Slide. The Slide? Did your rat blow a fuse or something? The witness is... The fan. I think I'll let this one blow over. My witness is Major Crumb. Quite right. I saw him. It was black as pitch. The door cracked open, and I saw him dragging away the body. Short, hairy fellows with sunken eyes and tattooed necks. Sailors from the South Seas. Spies. Spies from abroad. No, this again. I think we've heard enough. Wait, Major. Did your spies look like them too? Good heavens! Hang on. No, there is a resemblance, but something's not quite right. That's that then. I'm not persuaded by your witness. Oh, uh, still a few bugs in the system to winkle out. All right, that's enough of that. Move along now, everyone. Sound of the toy! Now I remember. Go on, then what happened? Oh, I kept the toy and shut the wee doggies doing the slide. They didn't like that one bit neither. <laughs> I was having a grand time. I wanted a wee picky to remember by, so I went down to that photo thingamajig. I struck a manly pose and I was... I was... Oh, Crivens, it's all fading away. I'll be forgetting my own name next. Oh, don't get yourself in a twist, love. It'll come back to you. That's right. I remember. Go on. I was taking a picky, holding a stick of candy floss 
Oh, I love that stuff, me. I got my hunger up. Just then, like an answer to my prayers, the gong sounded for supper. I came to table, and there I found heaven, my lovely lass, Felicity. I remember the fine, sweet smell of her, like... She smelt like... Uh, Oh, blast it all. My nose is a blank. I cannot recall. Give it time, love. You'll remember. That's it. The sweet scent of felicity. How could I forget? I remember. I remember everything now. I'm cured. You've cured my hand, knees. You cured me, and... and... Oh, were a right numpty with you, weren't I? Still are, I reckon. But don't go weepy on me now. Tell me what happened after you sat down to supper. I was making a toast when the lights went it. My eyes were adjusting to the dark when... Thump! <gasps> who thumped you? Oh, I never saw who, but I saw what. The supper gone mallet! That's what hit me! The supper gong, Mallet? You sure, Chuck? Sure? Oh, I. Look! Look what it did to me! Ooh! Me, that's a crime, that is. No wonder your mind's been a blank. What kind of person would do that? They should be locked up. You go back to sleep now, love. Get some rest. Just leave him be, poor man. No much of a man, am I? Just hope the fragrant Miss Flick doesn't see me like this. Shut up, you big baby, and stop yakking. I will. Thanks for curing my hand knees. I'll no forget you. See that you don't. But if you really want to thank me, you can do summit for Wallace. It's his enterprise you spoiled. Now, back to sleep with you. Aye. Anything you see, Mrs. Gabberly. Oh, the constable won't even let you out for walkies, will he? That's an extra fluffy bat. Can't do any harm to trade up. Just this once. Oh, crikey, it's heavy. Must be family-sized floss. Does the nice doggy woggy want to choose another outfit? Show me what doggies like best. Finding it hard, aren't you? I'm just the same. Can never decide what to wear. Oh, oh, you found it. Good boy. Now Poochie Woo and Tinky Wee can play sailor again. You'd look lovely in lederhosen and a little alpine cap. Help me pick another outfit, Gromit. Captain, I do like those glasses, but I'm not sure they're still in style. And we wouldn't want my darlings walking around in last season's fashions, would we? It isn't fair. While I'm stuck in here, fashion is marching on without me. Better not. I'm not sure those are in style. 
If only I could go to town and pick up the latest fashion news. Then I'd know if those glasses are in or out. Good dog. Nice choice. Woo woo. Take me. It's dress up time, my darlings. Don't fuss, sweeties. You can go back upstairs in a minute. Right now, I need you to sit still. Aren't you cute? Yes, you are. <laughs> Run along and play. Oh, what a nice present. That's a stylish look. I do admire those sunglasses. I suppose they're back in fashion. Seems I'm something of a trendsetter. Help me pick another outfit, Gromit. Aye aye, Captain. The very latest. Jaunty. This is going to be such fun. Woo woo. Tinky wee. It's dress up time, my darlings. Keep staring long enough. I'm sure I'll detect Summit eventually. Do you sense something, boy? Hmm. Maybe this time I'll get some sense out of him. Candy floss down while I'm interviewing you, if you please. Ooh. I'll ask you again, and this time I want a straight answer. Did you, or did you not, thump Duncan McBiscuit? Did you not? I mean, you did not. Uh, that is to say, me, not you. I mean, I mean, not you, me. <laughs> I've heard quite enough, thank you. That's enough, I said. Phew. What happened to my little friend and protector? I have to spin up another. Thank you, Gromit. Oh! No thank you, Gromit. How funny! My darlings have one just like that. No thank you. Well, 
well met, Private. What are you doing with that, Private? Disgusting! Like something a dog might bring in. I'm not a supper gong, am I, Private? Right then. Where do you want to start? And the motive is... Can you rustle up a motive, man? The motive is... This... Chew toy. Really? The pups are very attached to that toy. I know from bitter experience. Of course they are. Mr. Squeaky was a present from their mumsy. That doesn't make it a motive for hurting Duncan, though. Oh, yes, it does. Duncan stole the toy from them doggies. Told me so himself. He never did. Oh, he did. If Mr. McBiscuit did indeed take their favourite toy, that could well be a motive for thumping. But why would Duncan want to take Mr. Squeaky? The very idea is ridiculous. Ridiculous? Possibly. But on the balance of probabilities, spot on. <gasps> I believe this motive meets the test of the law. You're on the way to proving your case, Wallace. You know the motive? What's next? And the weapon is... Do you have anything resembling a weapon, lad? I could use one sharpish. The weapon is this mallet. Here you bang on the money this time, Wallace. I remember now. That's what it Duncan all read. He said so himself, and he's got the dent in his bonds to prove it. It all makes sense now. That's a maladjusted mallet, all right. Maladjusted? What makes you say that? Well, it looked all fluffy and pink and delicious. But underneath it were rock hard and not very tasty. Uh, thank you, Mr. Pinnear. It appears that the mallet is indeed our weapon. Well done, Wallace. The case against uh, them two dogs is coming together. The only piece of the puzzle left is the witness. And the witness is... You've been Major Crum another go, are you? Oh, uh, yes. My witness is Major Crumb. Yes. Quite right. I saw him. It was black as pitch. The door cracked open, and I saw him dragging away the body. Short, hairy fellows with sunken eyes and tattooed necks. Sailors from the South Seas. Spies! Spies from abroad! Not this again. I think we've heard enough. Wait, Major. Did your spies look like them too? Good heavens! That's them, all right! I'd recognize them anywhere. Put those spies in irons! That would be silly. They're puppies. Dogs of war, more like. What war? Oh, there is no war. What? All right, let's let sleeping dogs lie, shall we? The main point is... The Major saw these two dragging away Mr. McBiscuit. Isn't that right, Major? It most certainly is. In that case, according to the law, he is a legitimate witness. Wallace, you've shown us motive, weapon and witness. And according to the powers vested in me as an officer of the law, I now pronounce the case solved. Duncan McBiscuit was thumped by a mallet because of a stolen chew toy. The crime being witnessed 
by Major Crumb. The perpetrators of this evil deed were none other than the canine criminals Poojie Woo and Tinky Wee. No, it can't be. My darlings are precious, kind, easy wee doggies, not hooligan hounds. I knew it. Wallace knew it. Put them in chains. Throw away the key. Batten down the hatches. Cabin doors to manual. All in a day's detective work. Oh, I really do feel fit. Ooh. Oh, dear. The train must have come unplugged. That's handy. Oh, seems to have created a bit of a current. Help, Gromit. I've got that sinking feeling. We're all going down the drain. Oh my goodness, I'm feeling all topsy-turvy. Above. They followed their toy down the drain. Well, I'll give them one thing. They're dogged to the end. Welcome aboard, lad. Just a short jump to dry land, eh? No, no, from it. I'm about to be crushed. Do something. Poof, 
next poop. Yes, so for sure. Stop all this spinning, Gromit. No time for confectionery, lad. I'm beginning to feel seasick. Don't do it, lad. You'll blow yourself to smithereens. Gotcha! Thank heavens, we've made it, Gromit. We're back on dry land. That's one you or me, pal. Um, I do hope everyone's had an unforgettable holiday, and that you'll consider visiting West Wallaby Street Waterworld again next year. Gromit, where are you, lad? We've got quite a clean-up job in front of us. No time for dawdling. Gromit! Gromit!